Hello. Hello. How's it going? Hey, good. How about yourself, Jeff? Doing good. Doing good. Good. Let's see. We've got Anthony. And I'm guessing that I've got Kathy on here, too. Yep, that's right. Okay. Right. How are y'all doing today? Good. Excited for the conference. Good. And so tell me, what have you been in DECA before? Uh, yeah, I did DECA all four years of high school. Okay. Um, yeah, actively. I was a chapter president in my senior year. I was an officer junior year as well. I've uh, been to two ICDCs and I'm currently serving as the collegiate state officer, vice president. Okay. Yeah, so it's just been a pretty crucial part of my life so far. Yeah. So now have you competed? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I competed at state the last four years and did pretty well. Uh, senior year, I competed at ICDC. Mm -hmm. so I, I, I've done all. I've done all the types of competitions. I've done team role plays, individual role plays, written events, all that fun stuff. Okay. And did, yeah, so. did you do role, did you do team decision making events or role play? Yeah, I did. I did team division uh, sophomore year, and then I did role play junior and senior year. But I'm very familiar with all the guidelines for all competitions. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I was in charge of competition preparation at my chapter for the last two years, so I was training people for individual team and written. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, that's helpful. That'll yeah. be, that'll be helpful uh, in this workshop. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Should make it easier on you. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was excited to see that I was in charge of some sort of competition workshop. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it looks like we picked up Dan. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Are you there, Dan? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> okay. And so we should. We've got Anthony and Kathy, not. Dan, not your Kathy, different Kathy. <laughs> we'll wait just a couple more minutes to see if we pick up. There should be one, two, four others joining us. <clears throat> Did this work good for your schedule on a Sunday afternoon? Uh, yeah, the only thing it's interfering with is football, but that's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I don't have work for another hour, so this should, this is fitting in perfectly. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Yeah. All right, looks like we picked up Mary. Is it Mary? Hi, yeah. Hi. How are you? I am good. Well, kind of good. I'm a I'm a Packers fan, and they're not doing so hot, so maybe not so good. <laughs> Is it just a fumble on the play? Huh? Is it a fumble on the play right now? I have the game on. Oh, I don't. I I was watching the game, but I left. And we're down by eleven with five minutes to go. This is bad. <laughs> <sighs> So if we hear you yelling, we'll know what's going on, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I still have notifications popping up, but that's about it. <laughs> it's been a rough game. Gotcha. Yeah, yesterday was a rough, uh, rough college day. So that too. Yeah, not a good weekend for football. No, it has not been. No. <laughs> Sad. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and get started, and I'm going to record. Um, I'll record this session just so anybody who wasn't able to jump on um, will have a chance to watch this before um, 
on Wednesday, but the, the purpose of the webinar is really to just kind of go over the information um, that we're going to be presenting on Wednesday and seeing if you have questions and answering, um, you know, any concerns that you may have. Uh, now, Mary, have you competed before? Yes. Okay. And did you do team decision making or? Um, I've done it a few times. I've judged it more than I've actually competed in it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So you're familiar. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's the main thing. That's great that you're familiar. So, okay. Let's, the, the first thing before I turn my video off and go to the presentation, I emailed you last night. Did you get that email with the PowerPoint and the speaker notes? Yes. Yeah. Did you have a chance to look through it yet or? Yeah, uh, yeah briefly. Skimmed it. <laughs> you, enough to know it's there, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so when you get on site Wednesday, we'll have a box for you, uh, just a speaker box. And so it'll have your workshop title on it. And in that box, we'll have everything that you need to do that presentation. So um, like if you need markers or, I don't remember specifically this workshop, but some need index cards. So that'll all be in that box. Uh, so basically it's like you can take it to your area and everything you need is there. Um, one thing that we made the decision about was to not use AV for this conference because it was just too complex. I mean, with 21 different breakout rooms, it was so hard to try to figure out how we were gonna make all that happen. So I think what you'll find is as I developed uh, the workshops, they're very interactive and we want you to be excited and get the kids engaged. But the main thing, let's keep them moving, you know, keep them moving and keep them learning. So they're engaged throughout the whole conference. So the other thing in your speaker box, you'll find a folder and in that folder, it'll be tabbed. And so like behind the first tab will be a copy of the PowerPoint, even though you're not going to have it on the screen the students are all going to get a copy of it. So you'll have a copy of the PowerPoint presentation and I'll let you decide when you want to hand it out. You know, some presenters like to give things out at the beginning and some prefer to wait till the end. So they're not flipping through the PowerPoint and they're paying more attention to you. So I'll let you make that decision on when you want to hand out um, the presentation. Should, uh, as the, as the workshop is going on, should we keep referencing, PowerPoint, like as we're going with our content, should we tell them, all right, flip to the next page and do that? Or do we kind of just expect them to go along with it? You can, if you want to hand this out at the beginning and walk through it, just like a, you would a PowerPoint on the screen, that's fine. If you, so it's really your preference and how you want to um, walk through that information. So yeah, if you want to give them the PowerPoint up front and say, okay, you know, Turn to, you know, look at slide two, you know, which is the objective and then, you know, walk them through that way. That's just fine if you want to do it that way. Okay, cool. Okay. And then behind the second tab, you'll see if there, uh, this is going to be all the speaker notes. And I use an outline called PPAE, which is preparation, presentation, application, and evaluation curriculum stuff. You don't really care anything about, <laughs> but if you look on the right hand side, there's where you're going to have your speaker notes. So it's going to give you, uh, once you scroll through to about the second page, it's going to start giving you a time frame and say, you have two minutes to do an introduction and give the workshop objective. And on the right hand side, it'll tell you what that is. Well, obviously, you'll want to introduce yourself. <laughs> so I'm not going to write that introduction for you, but uh, you can introduce yourself, get to know them, um, and then talk about what the objective is. So, I mean, you can follow right along with that PPAE guide and, you know, make notes, definitely connect your DECA story to the curriculum, okay? So if you see something and you're like, this is something that I messed up on when I was competing, <laughs> you know, definitely make it your own story. So we want them to get the meat of it, but what we don't want to happen is we don't want to lose your personal touch too. You know, we want you to come in and be excited and get the kids excited and make sure that you're connecting um, to the material. And Mary, since you've been a judge in team decision making, there's several slides in there that we have 
that specifically reference judging. And so I think what you'll find is for that piece, you can go, okay, when I've judged this before, here's some examples of things that I've seen. So that way you can pull your own personal story into it. Mm -hmm. Sound good? And then behind the third tab in the uh, notebook will be an activity. So we've tried to add in at least one major activity in each of the presentations. And we'll walk through those um, here in just a minute. But any questions so far? Nope. Ready to jump in? Yep. Okay. I am going to pull up the PowerPoint so we can kind of walk through that first. Does that work? If I can find it, there it is. <laughs> okay. Can you see it now? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's go to slide two. So team decision making doesn't just happen. We want to work together to create smart goals. Um, and that's really a key uh, in team decision making events. And, you know, Mary, you can probably certainly um, tell stories about when you've judged, you can tell those students that have worked together and they're a true team and those that have just kind of been pushed together. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, know, you, can, yeah. you can tell a difference in that. And I think, you know, including a story like that could help them, you know, judges can sense if you haven't worked together on this. So uh, the next slide gets into, you know, some gladiator tips. And so what we're looking at here is we're just hounding over and over and over throughout the whole conference, the performance indicators, because that so often gets lost, you know, in competition. So we're going to, I think probably in this beginner track, they'll have at least three different opportunities to work on performance indicators. So by the time they leave the conference, they will know what a performance indicator is. <laughs> and how to define it and where to get information about it. So, and that, I think that's our goal is to better prepare them, um, you know, for competitive events. So the I'm next- Sorry, Jack, I'm confused. Are we all presenting the same thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, all of you are presenting team decision-making for gladiators. And so you'll be there. Let me pull this worksheet up. And I will show you because it's a little confusing. Okay, you, sh you should see an Excel document now. Everybody see that? Yep. Okay, so there's three sessions in the beginner track. The first session is Ace the Decker Role Play. The second session is Team Decision Making for Gladiators, which is what you're doing. And the third <laughs> is for Business Tips and Taboos. So you'll be, you'll be married, like for instance, you're in the red group. So you'll be with the person in the red group at the top, which is Jeannie Cloud, and the red group at the bottom, which is Alex Johnstone. And so you'll be in a large room split into three groups. And so they'll rotate from each of these sessions. Does that make sense? So one will start with you and then they'll rotate over to Ace the Deck of Role Play and then they'll rotate to Business Tips and Taboos. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Does that help, Kathy? Yes, that does, thank you. Thank you for asking. I'm glad we can clarify that. <laughs> So essentially, yeah, there's six of you. So that's why I wanted to do these webinars where it was by subject area <laughs> and not have everybody on one webinar because we wouldn't be able to really focus in on what you're teaching, you know? Um, so I wanted it to be just you on this call uh, so we can talk about just the information that, that you guys are gonna be presenting. Okay. 
And so you're like, I've had one call and I think there's four more after this. So you're kind of the guinea pig still <laughs> on how this works. Uh, but I will tell you, we're very excited because to our knowledge, there's not been any other state that's really tried this type of model yet, which is we develop the curriculum and then Arizona is able to continue using the curriculum and training presenters ahead of time. So we're pretty excited to see how this works. So I really hope that you'll take some notes and give us uh, either Kathy or Dan. Um, I think Dan Kelly's on this call. He's the new operations manager for Arizona DECA. Um, you know, I really hope that you'll give us some good feedback. And if you liked this model, if you feel like it better prepared you, you know, what we could do different, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay, then we'll jump into just the overview of team decision making. And so you'll notice that I've taken from the DECA website, the graphic. And so you'll see they're allowed to have two participants. They take a career cluster exam. They appear before a judge. There's one case study and a second for finalists. And then they have 30 minutes of prep time and 15 minutes of interview time. Pretty simple, right? Uh, the next slide, and, and I didn't spend a lot of time talking about this on the team decision-making events, but one of the things you can point out to them, if you want, uh, at least four of the performance indicators will come from one instructional area. But I wouldn't get too deep in that because the role play sessions are getting into that. Does that make sense? So I'm hoping you guys can spend more time on performance indicators. So the next slide will show you, here's the link, deca.org slash high school programs, high school competitive events. If they scroll down, this is where they're gonna find those contests with what career cluster it is, with the description. And then over here on the right, if you look towards the bottom, it's got the guidelines, performance indicators, the sample exam, and the sample event. So that's where they need to be going to get the information. Is that what you did, Anthony, when you were competing? Yeah. Okay. I went to those ones and I also, there's a very cool program called Competition University uh -huh. that our uh, chapter had access to. And uh, I mean, I studied on that just 15, 20 minutes a day along with checking out DECA's website and, uh -huh. and it, it improved my scores by a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the next slide is basically just showing that the sample tests are in the same place as the performance indicators. And on your lesson plan that I sent you, it goes a little bit more, more in depth on MBA Research and Curriculum Center, but one of the things I felt like it was important to share was MBA Research and Curriculum Center is who writes DECA's performance indicators. And it's also who writes their uh, competitions as far as the case studies and the tests. Uh, Arizona is a member state of MBA research. So they get discounted rates and in some cases free curriculum for schools. So if you have teachers in your workshop, especially teachers that might be new, that may not be familiar with this program. <laughs> okay. Robert Waller is at the Arizona Department of Education. And so they need to get in touch with him. All right. Mary, are you saying you're a new teacher? I am. Oh, okay. So are you familiar <laughs> with MBA research? Yeah, I've been using it in class. So you will be able to give, well, tell, tell us just a minute about how you're using it to connect. Um, for the most part, so far, I've only used it for some presentation material. Um, like I kind of obviously based on like my curriculum, I kind of know what I need to be teaching, but it actually breaks it down pretty well since I guess since we're a member state, it actually breaks it down by quarter of things that you can go through and you can just download the entire quarter of, of lesson plans. And I just kind of pull presentations from there and edit as I need to, but it's saved me some time. Okay. And so if you get a teacher that's asking you specific questions, it might be good to refer them to Mary too, because she may can share some of that. 
one of the important things is she's talking about how it breaks it into quarters. The objectives and the lessons that she's teaching through MBA Research and Curriculum Center, uh, and Curriculum Center are tied directly to DECA's performance indicators. Okay, so that's why it's so important that if they want to do, if they really want to take their DECA competition to the next level, that they utilize some of the services and resources through this program. Okay. But I'm actually going to their conclave next, the week after this, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, so are you a teacher too, Kathy? Um, I'm a, I'm a, on sabbatical. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a great conference. Um, I was, I was the state liaison for it um, in Oklahoma several years ago. And um, that conclave is a really good place to get information. Um, so that's great. That's exciting that you can take advantage of that. Um, but definitely, like I said, if you've got teachers in the room, uh, push this because Arizona is paying for it already. <laughs> you know, the State Department of Ed is paying for it, so take full advantage of it. Uh, okay. And to sort of summarize towards the end, you're going to talk about the judge perspective. Again, Mary, I think this is where you can bring in some interesting things, and Anthony, too, because you've seen a lot of judges. Um, I think one of the big things that you want to emphasize is read your judge. You know, if a judge has been sitting there for six hours, <laughs> chances are they're going to space out at some point. And so in order for the students to stand out, they really want to keep that judge engaged. And lastly, practice. You know, that's the big thing we want to enforce over and over. Okay, so let's look at that lesson plan really quick. So you'll notice in the preparation checklist, this is everything that you'll find in your speaker box. So the PowerPoint slides, the outline. Uh, we may not be using flip chart paper. It may just be oversized paper. Uh, we'll have markers. Um, a performance indicator handout, index cards, and playing cards. So as the students come in, I want you to give them, you know, talk to them. Obviously, we want to make it very upbeat as they're coming into the session. Um, ask them questions, you know, what are you learning from DECA, so on and so forth. Um, the, and and the, obviously, you guys that are in education know the more you can connect <laughs> with students, the more credibility you're going to have and the more apt they're going to be to listen to you. Uh, but give them one index card and one playing card as they come in the door. Uh, so then you'll jump right into the introduction and the workshop objective. Uh, you'll go over what those gladiator tips were that we talked about. And I mean, if you want to go word for word verba verbatim, you go right ahead, but that's not my style. <laughs> when I'm presenting workshops, and I doubt that's what you want to do either. So um, it's there if you need to read it verbatim, um, but definitely don't feel like you have to. Uh, so again, we're telling them where the performance indicators are. We're going to talk about SMART goals for a minute. And so what I've asked you to do is go over SMART goals. You know, SMART goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Have you heard that before? Mary's shaking her head, yes. <laughs> so ask the students to write a SMART goal on their index card and then partner with somebody and switch cards and talk about how they can improve their SMART goal. You know, so I think goal setting is critical when you talk about competitive events and planning. You know, you can't start prepping for a DECA competition two weeks before. <laughs> if they don't start now, um, they're not going to know enough of those performance indicators uh, down the road. So I think helping them understand why they need to set some goals now uh, to get ready for their competition will help. Uh, the next piece is performance indicator planning. So what I've done is divide the students into four groups based on their playing card. So if they're clubs, put them in one corner. If they're diamonds, put them in another corner. If they're hearts, in one corner and spades in the other corner. 
give them a couple of piece, pieces of flip chart paper markers, and then we're gonna give them the performance indicator handout. Can you see that on the screen? Performance indicators. Okay, explain the nature of effective written communications. You'll notice there's seven. So then on their flip chart paper, they have to define what each of the performance indicators mean and they've got to explain how they could be used in the development of a marketing plan. And you're going to give them about 13 minutes to do this. Okay. What are you thinking, Mary? Sounds good. Kathy? Oh, sorry. It's, that's quick, but it sounds good. <laughs> I know it's not a lot of time. <clears throat> But I felt like they're going to get more out of the hands-on and they're going to practice that performance indicator in the role play that you're going to have them practice it again in the team decision making. So I feel like we're going to get them really comfortable with that um, while they're at the conference. Right. Um, okay. And then it sort of goes right into that judge's perspective like we talked about at the end of the PowerPoint slide. There's the MBA research information. Practice, practice, practice. One of the things I put, if they, if you have time at the end, you know, give them a flip chart paper or, you know, one of the oversized pieces of paper again and have them brainstorm who can help them prepare for competition. Make them come up with a list of people. Is it parents? Is it advisory committee members? Is it, you know, friends, colleagues, you know, who could they enlist to help them prep? And then lastly, where can they find additional resources? And like if you go to YouTube, even if you just YouTube uh, DECA role play or DECA team decision making, you can find a lot of sample um, events from other states out there that are pretty good. So I think that's the main thing is just we're telling them where to go for resources and making sure that they feel prepared. Um, and so then we'll do wrap up and questions and then you have space at the bottom to write some notes to us. <laughs> okay. So like in the application, do you feel like the participants got it? Did you hit roadblocks? You know, what worked and what didn't work? So if you can, after you finish presenting, if you can take a few minutes to jot some of that feedback down for us, that would really help. Jeff, oh. do you know if we'll be in like suites or conference rooms or will we be in like the side of the hall? So the way everybody's going to be, it's going to be different. What we're trying to do for the beginner sessions is everyone, those three groups that they're going to rotate through. So you'll have about 150 students with the three different sessions will be in one large area. So does that make sense? And then, so all those students will stay in that one area with you and rotate between the three speakers, but it does not appear that you'll be in a separate room. So we will have clear visibility of every single person that's going between those sessions. I am not a hundred percent sure. I'm hoping that the chairs are set in such a way that it's not looking at everybody. <laughs> you know, it's more one-on-one, -on -one, but we won't know that the true setup until we get there Wednesday. So we'll just kind of have to make do. So will yeah. we have a microphone? The groups are probably only going to be about 40 or 50. Do you feel like you'll need one? Um, if there's other people talking in this and it's in the same room, I probably would. Okay, I'll check into that. Jack, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> These things. Um, there are no microphones um, whatsoever. The areas that we're using are really large spaces. Um, Sometimes you'll be in a separate room for your group of 30. Sometimes you won't. Um, it's just kind of all over the place. I know that when we've done conferences at Chase Field in the past, this has been the setup and it hasn't really caused too many problems. Um, 
but we, we tried to set it up as, you know, um, best as possible. So you're not talking over other people, but there will be kind of that ambient noise in each presentation. Okay. I just have to have lemon water. <laughs> okay. I'll bring it. <laughs> we will make sure you've got some lemon water. <laughs> and, and the groups are not more than 30. So each rotation is less than 30 people. Oh, okay. There you go. So yeah, you probably won't for that many. Are, I don't know if this is a Dan or a Jack question, but are the groups already set for like which colored track they're on? Yeah, so the way it works is each of you have your color, right? So you're red. So when at opening session, um, we have staff from the Diamondbacks that will escort each group to their area. So we'll call out, will the red group please stand up and leave? And then they'll be escorted over to the area. Then once you get them to the area, the three of you red leaders in that area are subdivided into A, B, and C, and so are the students. So at that point, once you have all of red in the right spot, then you go, everybody with an A on their name badge, come to me. Everybody with a B, go over here. Everybody with a C, go over there. And then you just rotate between those two. Got it. Okay, a couple of other things. Um, I had mentioned that parking, I had sent some information about parking before, but parking at Chaseville is actually free that day. So you can park there without any trouble. Um, there won't be any food available at the facility. So Kathy, we'll have to make sure you've got lemon water. Because <laughs> I don't know that that's something we can get on site. <laughs> now I'll bring it in my hydro flask. I'm good. Okay, all right. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, are we are oh, we allowed to bring in things like that since it's like a sports arena? I know they have kind of strict rules on that. No I was, oh, go ahead. Just no bags, no luggage, those types of things. But yeah, if you like have a purse and you want to bring in that, that's fine for that since it's not for the game. You're not competing. Okay. Well, guys, I got to tell you. It was great getting to meet you all. I hate to keep you from your games. <laughs> I know uh, we lost. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, well, I, it was really a pleasure getting to meet all of you. Do you have any other questions? Jack? Do you feel like this was helpful? I think it was helpful. Can you go over the uh, mock competition? <laughs> Um, or are you planning on doing that on Wednesday? I was planning on doing that Wednesday. Okay. Um, so one of the things that we've done, I'll go ahead and, and talk about it. Um, Hold on, sorry. Trying to find that email. We'll give you more information about this on Wednesday. Um, but I'll go ahead and mention, just so you know it's coming. Okay. Okay, there. Okay, so you should see an email between Dan and I on the screen. So you'll notice that we're going to have three rotations, which is the sessions that we were talking about. And then there's another rotation, or not a rotation, but what we're calling a mock competition that will be from 3 until 3.45. <clears throat> and so what we're asking is that everybody hold that third group that you have. And so we're going to put them through um, a true mock competition um, right at the end of that last rotation. Uh, but I don't want you to stress too much about that at this moment uh, because you're going to be partnered with one of um, our unbox trainers, either me or one of the other five of us that um, 
you're grouped with. And so we'll be able to tell you more specifically on Wednesday exactly how that's going to flow. Okay. And I think part of that comes from we just want to see what that facility looks like before we <clears throat> decide what the best uh, route with that is. But essentially, you'll get a role play. You're going to pass it out to the students, give them some time to prep, and then ask for some volunteers to come up and present their scenario in front of everybody and sort of role play it with the group to give them that true so they actually get to see it uh, before they leave. Jack, I'm supposed to go present something else to the teachers at that time. So um, we just got to make sure somebody else can run that role play for my group. Okay. We'll and, have, I'm already planning on having somebody go over to her group. Okay, thanks, Dan. Okay. All right. You guys, I really uh, look forward to meeting all of you on Wednesday. Um, I hope you know we're so excited. Um, I will be in Phoenix uh, early on Tuesday morning. So you have my cell phone and your email. So if you come up with any questions or, you know, just need to bounce something off of me, that's fine. Feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email um, and we'll work through it. So I'm really excited to see what you come up with. So. Any other questions? Okay, well, thanks a lot, you guys. And I will see you on Wednesday, Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock. Cool, sounds good, thank you. All right, thank you. Yes. Th thank you. See you soon, bye.